No person can be saved without water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, nor by any other name or translation of his name, for there is power only in the name of Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ only must we be saved. No person can enter the kingdom of God without water and spirit baptism. This is the commandment of the New Testament. It shows you love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, with mind and might. The person must confess whom Jesus Christ is and repent of all the old covenant ways and sins. Okay, let's get into this. You want to see scripture? In John 3, Jesus answered, said, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament by... You know, He's the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might be might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For there is for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. <clears throat> Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Do you see the problem there? That, that gives you the answer why. <clears throat> Acts 1, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. John baptized in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost for remission of sins before Jesus was crucified on the cross for our sins. So the baptism of John was um, a baptism for repentance of sin, wherein the Holy Ghost was not offered yet. So when Jesus was crucified to death on the cross and buried in a tomb and rose from the grave early the third day, he truly ascended into heaven uh, in anyways, this that action itself finished the old, created a new. So the baptism also changed, but it is still a necessity. And you'll see the scripture that goes with that and why. Acts 2, Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ, now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Acts 8. But when they believed, Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Further along, you see, uh, Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Peter said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded that the chariot to stand still and they went down both into the water both philip and the eunuch and he baptized him and when they were come up out of the water the spirit of the lord caught caught away philip that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing in acts 10 while peter yet spake these words the holy ghost fell on all of them which heard the word and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished 
as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with tongues in different languages, and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Acts 16, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house and they spoke unto him the word of the lord and to all that were in his house and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized and he he and all his straightway and when he had brought them into his house he set meat before them and rejoiced believing in god with all his house in galatians for Ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Greek or Jew. Sorry, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and the heirs according to the promise. In Ephesians, it says that, he, he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. In Hebrews, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. In First Peter, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. First Peter, the like figure one to even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men." In Romans, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart men believeth into, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord is, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Second Corinthians, for though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Beloved, when I beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but obtained salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they might also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Water baptism is 
the faith, the salvation, the belief, it's all in one. You must be water baptized to be saved in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you reject such salvation, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. We see in the book of Revelation that when the second seal is broken, it will be evident that there is no more peace on earth, no compassion, no love, no joy that can only come from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, through the Holy Spirit. For he is in heaven with the Holy Spirit and his people breaking the seals. What does that mean? No more salvation is offered when the seals are broken. What does that mean if you want to go to heaven? If you are not one of the 144,000 Jews of the tribe of the Old Covenant Israel, then you must die rejecting the mark of the beast in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Your souls will go under the altar until the end when the angels gather the 144,000 from the whole earth. So water baptism scriptures, other than Jesus, is John 3, 5. We saw that up above. Jesus answered. And you see Hebrews, and I believe I had repeated all that down here um, for a short go over. If there's anything that I missed above, it's all down here. If it's the Lord's will, Jesus Christ bless you.